With this cuffing technique, what we're um, really focused on is the fact that the, the subject, the non-compliant or the agitator has got his hands buried around his waist, which is uh, somewhat problematic because if somebody's gonna carry um, you know, a, a tool of some, some sort, like an edge weapon, a blunt object, or maybe a dirty syringe or needle, most likely it's gonna be in the waistline, somewhere's in the pocket. So this technique is, is a systematic way to expose one hand at a time while maintaining pressure on the subject. So should they become um, sporty or live with the hips, we have an ability to disengage and transition to a ballistic response if required. So with this technique, the hands are um, around the waistline, the subject is non-compliant. So in other words, they're telling us to bugger off and we need to expose these hands systematically one limb at a time so we can assess what's in the hands, i.e. Um, a dirty syringe, a blade, a gun, something that poses a danger. All right, so for this technique, we're gonna assume that we've already got the uh, subject or the individual, the non-compliant to the ground, belly down. We're going to begin the cuffing procedure. The issue here that we have is the, the subject, the attacker, the non-compliant has got his hands by his waistline. So higher probable chance if a douchebag is carrying something, this is where it's gonna be. So this means it's a little bit more risky for us when it comes time to exposing the hands and getting the hands to the back. So for this technique, assume that we've already got them to the ground, but now it's time to start applying some handcuffs to this individual. There's a systematic way to get the hands exposed at the element or risking an element of danger that he could be um, simply um, digging for something like a blade or a gun or something of that, that nature. So with the firearm on safe, we can do a couple of things here. Depending on the, um, the slack and the tension that you have in your sling, you can wrap it around the barrel, get it out of your way. As we start the, the process, it's a systematic way to maintain pressure on the non-compliant to expose one limb at a time. So as we apply pressure, if this is the arm that we want to expose first, we're going to apply pressure with our knee onto the opposite side. So you can imagine, I got a little bit of pressure on his front delt and we're going to jam our knee into that space between his front delt and the ground. So what we want to feel is our knee we want to feel it on the earth between basically his ribs and his bicep. When this happens, as we drive that in, we're still maintaining pressure on the opposite hand. So if it becomes dynamic and live, we can address it. So while we have pressure here, we're going to back step, keeping pressure on his hamstring here. So if his hips start to move, then we know he's starting to get a little bit spicy. With the hand that's closest to the head, we can reach in with four fingers underneath the armpit, and we're going to use a lever with our elbow down towards the ribs as we maintain control of the wrist. So levering down, we're gonna expose the limb. Once we see that there's nothing in the hand, we're gonna bring it into his back and we apply the wedge. So this wedge essentially is the knee is gonna drive up underneath his front delt. And then now we can go hands free. Can he get his hand free here? Depending on the flexibility and the mobility of the individual, there may be an element where that hand can come free. If we're concerned about it, we apply the wedge a little bit deeper towards the uh, front delt and then it's gonna be a little bit more problematic for him. Then when it comes time to um, ex expose the opposite limb, <clears throat> maintaining pressure, back step. So we have pressure on his hip joint and his hamstring. Four fingers under the elbow, leverage down with the el our elbow as we lever his elbow towards the ceiling. Expose the wrist. We have a look at the uh, hand, if there's anything in it, obviously we're gonna address it right away. If not, systematically, we're gonna grab onto the thumbs, apply the wedge position here, and then now we can look to access our cuffs from wherever uh, they may be, and then we can get anything that's on his wrist or his hands, expose the skin, and then apply the cuffs. And then this would be a systematic way to safely expose the hands without the surprise of potentially a blade or a gun coming active.